Right, so Rachel Reeves, Keir Starmer in a wig, the wannabe next Tory Chancellor of the Exchequer. Whether she wears a red rosette or not really doesn't matter. The politics isn't changing after all under a future Sir Kid Starver administration. But she's got the right hunt with Jamie Driscoll that he's now running as an independent to be the North East Metro Mayor and has again come out to play the anti-Semitism card in relation to that. As regular viewers will know, because I've spoken about this situation with Jamie Driscoll before, he was overlooked as the Labour candidate for this new Metro Mayor job for the North East, despite being the incumbent Metro Mayor under current boundaries, the North of Tyne Metro Mayor. Despite great achievements in reducing poverty, growing the local economy and creating jobs in the North East, it was never about skill, it was never about competence or talent or popularity or any of the things that make for a good candidate. It was, of course, all about the fact Driscoll as a socialist is a rotten lefty, is one of the last of the Corbyn types in positions of power. What Starmer wants, Starmer gets in Labour these days. A spoilt child of a politician, terrified of anyone challenging him or making him look bad, of people who know better than he does, which is, well, most people, frankly. He's a political pygmy, a battery-operated Tony Blair wannabe with the remote control in the hands of Peter Mandelson. And no matter how good the batteries are, he still comes across as utterly lifeless. The ultimate challenge for the Duracell bunny, I don't think you're up to the job, rabbit. Anyway, back to reality. So... Driscoll resigned as a Labour member in order to stand again, to give the people of the North East a socialist option on the ballot paper. And with his £150,000 campaign fund target nearly reached in just two weeks, solidarity has been shown. And an appetite to see Driscoll challenged for the job as an independent now has clearly been shown. At time of writing, he has only to raise just shy of £25,000 to go of his full £150,000 target, so he's very nearly there. But Reeves is on a whinge about it and has said Driscoll was guilty of anti-Semitism. That is why he couldn't be considered as a candidate. She said it's up to Jamie Driscoll what he does. But he was ruled out of standing as the Labour candidate next year because Keir has taken on an incredibly tough stance on anti-Semitism. He said it was the first commitment he made as the incoming leader of the Labour Party, that it would tear anti-Semitism out by its roots. And, you know, Jamie Driscoll, against good advice, shared a platform with people who had been expelled from the Labour Party for anti-Semitism. And I'm not going to make any apologies for that tough stance on anti-Semitism. It is a deep shame and a deep stain on the Labour Party that when Jeremy Corbyn was leader of the party, that anti-Semitism took hold. And that's why Jamie Driscoll was barred from standing as a Labour candidate. The entire basis for this rant of Reeves, therefore, has been the accusation that Driscoll had shared a platform with film director Ken Loach, of course, a discussion about his new film, The Old Oak, this has been the narrative made by several members of the Labour shadow cabinet in regards to Driscoll connecting him with Loach and this incident. However, undermining all of that from Driscoll's perspective is that anti-Semitism never actually came up as a topic of scrutiny at Driscoll's NEC panel interview for The Post. He said, Rachel Reeves has made herself look foolish here. Labour HQ, whoever is advising her, has given her a hospital pass. The NEC panel that interviewed me categorically told me that there was no allegation of anti-Semitism against me. A very good reason for that, of course, is it would be rather actionable if they'd accused Driscoll of being an anti-Semite on the basis that he'd shared a platform with one in the form of Ken Loach, alleged as they do, not that Ken Loach is anything of the kind. So, of course, that wasn't why he was turned down for the Labour candidacy. Like I said, it all amounts to factionalism. However, Driscoll aside... This isn't the first time Reeves has come out publicly attacking Ken Loach as an anti-Semite. Loach himself was expelled from the Labour Party, not for anti-Semitism at all, as Reeves insists on repeating, but because he had spoken to a proscribed group prior to it being proscribed, and when given the option to condemn the people of Labour against the witch hunt, a group that began in 2017 to call out the anti-Semitic lies, the scam that it was against Corbyn, and later the purging of mainly left Labour members on spurious accusations of anti-Semitism going on under Keir Starmer's leadership, Loach refused to do so, standing for what is right, not for what the Storm Troopers demanded of him. He was expelled for showing solidarity, basically, with an organisation and members thereof that were deemed to not be compatible with Labour's rules, aims or values, for which you need to read Keir Starmer's rules, since the Labour ones get abused to his ends whenever he feels like it. His aims, because factionalism and continuing Tory rule are his aims, Anything else is a promise just waiting to be broken, and his values, much like his convictions, his vows, his missions, and God knows what else he's called for, pledges, they change every time the wind changes direction. To have values, to have actual solid principles, isn't functionally in keeping with the Labour Party anymore. Demonstrating that further is the fact that Starmer himself has stood on platforms with Ken Loach, from featuring in his 1997 film McLibel to appearing with him on Question Time in 2016. Surely Starmer should purge himself then. 
Any other examples? How about Ed Miliband interviewing Loach on his podcast in 2019? Purge him. So what if Miliband is Jewish? He wouldn't be the first one Starmer purged, would he? Clearly the wrong sort, therefore. Punish him for what he did four years ago. The rules of the Labour Party now apparently demand it. How about Pope Francis? Well, he's not a Labour Party member, Dana, that we know of. Well, set that aside for a moment, but should he be condemned too for associating with Ken Loach, having invited him recently to the Vatican? Should he be excommunicated by the Labour Party? Boycotted? Get some Game of Thrones nuns to ring bells behind him and call shame, perhaps? Of course not, that would all be very silly, wouldn't it? But such is the hypocrisy. Speaking of hypocrites, though, you'd figure Rees would know better than to bring up nonsense stories of anti-Semitism about others when she's never apologised for her own display of it. It would be remiss of me to not bring up Rachel Reeves' self-confessed political hero, Nancy Astor, wouldn't it? This is the peak example of Starmer's selective factional attitude towards dealing with anti-Semitism, because when then-NEC member Laura McNeil asked Starmer at an NEC meeting if he would uphold the same zero-tolerance approach to anti-Semitism he had publicly declared to the example of Rachel Reeves heaping praise on Nancy Astor, he arrogantly sneered that he wasn't going to discuss it. He is accountable to the NEC, with a majority in his favour these days, though. They don't tend to hold him to account, so nobody does. Who is there to hold him to account anymore? Nobody anymore, save us with our votes, which he doesn't deserve, and he certainly won't be getting mine. Nancy Astor was the first woman ever elected to Parliament, but she was a virulent anti-Semite and Nazi sympathiser, one of the worst examples of a politician you can possibly emulate, and the fact there are any MPs in this day and age wanting to be associated with her because of those hard-right, offensive, racist views, frankly, should bother a lot of people. And when it's a member of a political party that claims to be dealing with anti-Semitism root and branch, the hypocrisy and shamelessness is even more poignant. It was a scam. It was weaponized, and the examples of that willfully ignored by our media are many. They don't take a lot of looking for. The entire affair is one designed to flush the left, flush socialists, out of a democratic socialist party that still has the nerve to call itself thus. That's why, instead of Driscoll being the obvious Labour candidate, the experienced hand already doing the job and doing a good job, the Labour candidate is Kim McGuinness, the Northumberland Police and Crime Commissioner, a woman currently being embroiled in a racism scandal of her own making, as an old 2011 tweet suddenly came to light where she was telling someone to F off, she's not a gypsy. Anti-gypsy Roma and traveller racism still acceptable, it seems, as Labour have again totally ignored it. Because racism from the right wing, the Starmery side of things, the Blairite mantra, is apparently acceptable. The rules are only for the left if they dare breathe too hard in the wrong direction, let alone dare open their mouths. It's notable that this story has been the only interesting thing to actually come out of the McGuinness camp for weeks. People are not talking about anything else in regards to her, the Labour candidate. Meanwhile, Driscoll's campaign is far louder, far more energetic, and backing Jamie is a vote not just for common sense, competence and experience, but also a vote against factional power grabbing that seems to be all about the interests of Keir Starmer, Rachel Reeves and the rest of his pathetic offering for government. We deserve better than more Tories wearing different coloured rosettes, taking turns with each other in power when nothing actually changes. And those spreading such barefaced lies about other candidates should be treated with the disdain and disgust they deserve, especially when they're hypocrites on the scale of Rachel Reeves. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Meanwhile, there's a video recommendation for you where to share a platform with Ken Loach should be an absolute privilege, not a crime. And well, I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.